This is Patrick from Diesel Machine, and I'm hanging out with Rock'em Radio. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you spending these lockdown days? <laughs> uh, hanging in there like everyone else. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. We're going to chat about some metal today, huh? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Especially your album, Evolve. It's awesome. Good job. Thank you very much. It was a lot of work and uh, a lot of time to make it, but uh, it's finished and we're very happy. What can you tell me about this album? Uh, well, it's a, a couple of songs that we had written very, very long ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, didn't, there wasn't enough room on the first record, so we decided, you know, we'll, we'll pick our favorites and oh. we'll keep these for the next release. And obviously that took a lot longer than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone got sidetracked with di different bands and, you know, different aspects of life. But uh, we, we made some new songs and we managed to put it all together and make a full-length album. And... Uh, I figured this is probably the worst possible year to release a record, but oh. at the same time, we all need it. We all need an outlet for the aggression and the frustration, and so we decided it was time to share it with everyone. <laughs> I I'm agree with the year. 2020 is not a good year. <laughs> yeah, it's been difficult, but, uh, you know, gonna so make I it through one way or another. I like your song, React. It's amazing, that song. Why do Great, you thank you very much. You're very welcome. Why did you choose that song to be the first single of your album? Uh, well, I didn't choose the single, but uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I think it's, it's sort of a, I think it's sort of a, a mixture of really heavy stuff, but also you know very very groovy and and sort of the closest thing we probably did to anything mainstream. But uh, yeah, still a good punch in the face. Oh yeah! Is there any difference between this new album and the first one? Tour to test. What I like about it is, uh, I think that the productions went to the next level. I, I listened to Torture Test recently, and I still think the production is great. Mm -hmm. But I think this one is even more modern. I think we're sort of on par with what's happening right now in the metal world. Um, and of course, you know, as I said, some of the earliest material that we did is on this record. Actually, the very first song I think we ever wrote was Anger with Him. Mm -hmm. And uh, that had more had more of an early crowbar feel to it and mm -hmm. uh, very sludgy and the original version I think was even slower I think <laughs> it would actually be great to release the uh, the demo version because I still love it but uh, we, we progressed quite a bit with the songwriting there's some newer stuff on there I think um, uh, it makes for a nice blend of what what we were and what we became so that's why the, the title track is evolved so we we evolved as people we evolved musically and as a band, so that kind of sums it up for us. Absolutely. How was the creative process of Evolve? Um, you know, we all kind of bring our own individual ideas to the table. Okay. Um, we all have home studios, but my preferred method is usually to, to get in the room with everyone, or, or at least one other person, and have some chemistry there, you know? So a lot of the, the songs had started with Shane and I just jamming for hours, you know, just droning riff after riff after riff and it would sort of take shape and uh, those would be the, the start of songs and then the other guys would come in and put their own personal signature on there and that's, that's kind of how we've always written oh okay okay you know you had a lot of experience I did an interview 10 years ago with Halford with Rob and in the middle of the interview um, he said something like uh, you know I'm very proud of my of my lineups of Halford <laughs> <laughs> you was part of the, the best two albums, the best two records, Resurrection, Crucible. And Rob was, yes, it's true, he was proud of, of his lineups. What memories have you about those years, Patrick? Uh, it was, you know, someone had said in the past, you know, you never want to meet your heroes, but I think Rob is the exception to that rule. He's such a great uh, person and such a huge musical influence on me that it was it was an honor to to meet with him and to work with him and uh and most importantly to write songs i didn't want to be in a judas priest cover band i wanted to, to make music and i got that opportunity and i'll be eternally grateful to rob yes for that and uh, mm -hmm. we're still friends to this day happy yes. to see him back in the priest but uh, <laughs> i do miss the resurrection days of course and um, your album life is insurrection is one of my favorite life albums and you was part of that album it's yeah, amazing yeah. that was amazing yeah it was a lot of fun and uh you know, Rob 
sort of made me the musical director of the band. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he would tell me what songs to rehearse. And he would always ask me, like, you know, what if, you know, I'm a huge Priest fan from the beginning all the way on. You know, every every single thing that they ever put out, I was already familiar with. And I really enjoyed the, the fight records as well. But, <laughs> um, you know, Rob, Rob gave me the opportunity to go back and to pick some of my favorite Priest tunes that we would play. And uh, so I, I think that was cool. We got to, he was even surprised by some of the ones that I picked. Hey, okay. Yeah. Who who are your biggest musical influences, uh, Pat? Uh, I would definitely say, you know, Priest is, is a huge influence. Maiden, of course. Um, you know, the, the formative years of, of metal, you know. Mm -hmm. All of the Sabbath stuff, but uh, particularly Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, who are, you know, life-changing records. Um, as I got a little more... Older and more aggressive in my metal, I, I think uh, Slayer made a major impact on me. Um, definitely, Mashuga wow. created something very, you know, very intense and very unique. Um, but the basis for all of it was the, the classic metal, you know. Oh, okay, okay. You play a lot of years. You have um, a long, a long time uh, experience. What's the crazy thing that happened on tour, Pat? Um, hard to say. I mean, we we did so many concerts in so many places with so many bands. It was, uh, you know, the overall experience that I'm just grateful for, you know? Okay. If you could choose three bands as the most significant influences of this new record, what band would you choose and why? Hmm. That's, that's kind of a tough one. Um, when I write, I don't really think about other bands and other influences. So, I mean, it's kind of a, a combination of, of all of our influences. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all four members. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say there was, there was one particular band that we were even trying to uh, emulate or take influence from. So, but I think it fits in somewhere with, uh, with most of the modern bands. Okay. Okay, okay. And Pat, if you could change anything about the music industry, what would it be? Um, I think it's the way that artists are always the last to be paid. I think mm -hmm. everybody makes their money, and then, you know, unless you're one of the 1% where you control everything, um, you know, the record company takes their money, the The management takes their money, the merchandise company takes their money, the publishing company takes their money, the lawyers, the business managers, and uh, we're at the bottom of the food chain, basically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now you have these uh, streaming services, and, you know, you can get a million million plays, and you'll end up with, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a fraction of a penny. Mm -hmm. And I think that's unfortunate, because it, it makes it more difficult for good music and, uh, you know, different kinds of music to survive, mm -hmm. you know, so you end up with super mainstream, boring, uh, influencer bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> And how, how could you change that? Do you have any idea? Well, I think it's up to the end user. I think that, you know, people who are fans need to support the artist in whatever way possible. I know it's, it's difficult to resist the temptation to download everything for free or you know, rip music from your friends. Um, but really, you're harming the artists that you love. So, you know, if there's any way to support the, the bands that you like, whether it's uh, purchasing their music direct or their merchandise direct, um, I think it, it really starts with the fans because otherwise you're going to end up with, um, you know, Justin Bieber <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> He's Canadian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Pat, yeah. if you could advise, advise a young musician who want to start a music career, which would be your advice? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that answer. No, it's, uh, it's the classic answer, which is um, do it because you love it, not because you're going to get rich, as you're probably not. You have to do it because you love it. And, okay. Uh, don't, do, don't do it for the money because it's getting harder to achieve monetary success through music these days. Just being able to be able to talk to you and to you know celebrate different moments of my career and the things that I've been able to accomplish 
is uh, is probably the best form of payment for me. I'm happy that people enjoy my work. Oh yeah! Any last word for the listeners of Rockum? Everybody, stay safe, and hopefully, we'll see you all next year. And keep music alive. Keep supporting the artists.